Hey guys, from Chester here, Mission Forge, and today we're gonna go ahead and be doing a little different. No uh, forging today, I just got back from a trip, so I'm not set up for anything. Um, so what we're gonna be doing, so is we're gonna be reacting to a particular scene from Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Now this is not a jab or anything on the movie itself. In fact, I find the movie very fun, I enjoy it, I think it's a great movie. Um, but we're gonna look at the scene where um, Jack Sparrow runs into Will Turner inside the blacksmith shop. And we're just gonna look at the blacksmith shop, see how accurate it is, um, see what the shop looks like, if it's pretty close to the time period, um, and all that fun jazz. So we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at that. So with that, guys, let's go ahead and let's get started. First thing I noticed right off the bat, look, the mouse here, hammer, 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 and it's on this rotating thing here that's being ran by a donkey. Um, that wouldn't happen. Uh, that would be too hard to keep your hammers and everything organized. Um, so, uh, I mean, yeah, it looks kind of cool for the movie, but uh, realistically, most Smiths wouldn't do that. They would have the hammers in a rack so they can easily identify which hammers they need. They're not going to sit there and want to have to had this big old thing spin around to find a particular hammer. Also, look at this. A bunch of completed swords right here. Um, that wouldn't happen either. Those would be, uh, back in those time frame, in this time frame, the 1700s, the smiths were still very traditional type smiths like you saw in the medieval era, which was the smith worked on the blade. And then they would have a person that would work on the hilts and, you know, and all that other fun jazz. So they wouldn't have the completed blades inside the shop here. Now, um, if he did do everything, that'd be fine, but they wouldn't have it there. A completed blade in a dirty, potentially humid shop area for them to, to become tarnished and rusted, it just wouldn't happen there. Also, there wouldn't be a donkey in a shop. A uh, couple of reasons. One, uh, you have to feed the donkey and make sure it's watered well because it's gonna get hot in that shop um, So they wouldn't do that. It'd be like that just that just wouldn't happen um, You're not gonna want to try to Have to forge and be concerned about the animal at the same time now back then they didn't have the same safety concerns We do now about our animals, but you know uh, That just that just wouldn't happen that would not again that wouldn't make any sense right where I left you. So, this doesn't make sense. There's a hammer right here, right? And it's tied on. Why have a, why have a hammer there? It makes no sense. So, whatever. And it looks like a colonial type claw hammer, but I could be wrong. Okay, so from what you can see of this anvil right here, this looks very similar to a colonial style anvil, which is correct for its time frame. Um, now the, this is definitely more of a more modern look to it. Um, the hardy hole here, so you got the hardy hole here, um, it would actually still be a bit, probably a little bit further back. Um, now the heels on these hangers, so the back side of the anvil, it, they're not very big on colonial style an, uh, anvils. Um, and there should be no cutting face or cutting board, whatever you want to call it, cutting block on the front of the anvil here. So towards the front of the anvil, it should be just, you know, your, your, your face of the anvil and it should go right down to the horn. Um, so I can't tell from this angle here if there's a cutting, uh, you know, cutting block on there or not. Uh, but it looks pretty accurate because there's no purchase or purchase holes in colonial style anvils. They didn't come out; those didn't come out till a little later. And the London pattern anvil didn't come out till about mid 19th century, so about 1850s or 1860s when the London pattern started coming out. Um, so this so far looks pretty accurate. Now. The hammer here is definitely more of a modern day hammer, and there's a tall tale sign for that, and that is look at the handle. 
So if you guys have seen any of my hammer videos, you talk about blacksmith handles and how they are, should be and stuff like that. Well, as you can see here, it's got a sweep here, and then you got this little hourglass shape right here, okay? So a lot of handles from what we know back then on hammers, they did have you know some designs, swells in the middle of them, and sometimes a little narrowing here. But overall, if you look at them, they're just straight. There is almost no design to them. So it would have been one just smooth piece there. In fact, you might see some of them curved or whatever. Um, but this is definitely a modern style anvil or uh, hammer. You can you can just tell. And now they had a bunch of different style hammer heads there like that. So that is still perfectly possible. Um, but the just the uh, the handle here really gives it away that it's a modern hammer. Not where I left you. You're the one they're hunting. Okay, so another point here. Over here, you got the forge, and you can see it's still burning. Will was gone doing his thing. The one drunk smith was drunk. That forge would not be lit right now. Um, it would be it would be dead. Um, the reason being is that coal, um, they had to make their own coal. So it wasn't like something they could just run to the store and, and pick up. You know, you had to fell trees, and then there's a certain way to make coal. Um, so you, you had to do all that stuff. So they wouldn't have just done that. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing I noticed too is you can see here, it looks like a bunch of hay and stuff on the ground. Uh, you wouldn't have hay or anything flammable like that in a blacksmith shop, um, you know, because fire. So that would be just like a plain dirt floor or something along those lines. It definitely would not be hay on there. Um, and I get they do it for the movies because they want it to look a certain way and stuff, and that's fine. But that's not what, what they would have been back then. Again, you can see the hammers hanging up here, more completed swords, you know, over here and here. So, yeah. The pirate. You seem somewhat familiar. Have I threatened you before? I make a point of avoiding familiarity with pirates. Ah. Well, then it would be a shame to put a black mark on your record. So if you excuse me. The sword. <laughs> Ready. Alright, so I want to point something out here. And, well, we'll see if we can get a better shot of it here in a minute. But look at this back here. They got these iron masks and stuff at the blacksmith shop. That wouldn't be there. Um, these iron masks, which I'm not 100% sure if they were actually truly used. You know, I've actually never looked that up. Um, but that wouldn't be in a blacksmith shop that would definitely be um wherever the prison would be located and stuff like that or the jail or whatever they keep or i don't know but it would not be in the blacksmith shop there I'm pirate. you threaten miss swan only a little All right, a couple things here. One is, look how big this coal forge is. That is a big coal forge. Um, not to say they didn't have big forges, but that's that's just really big. Um, you know, figure right here, you got your, you know, where you would have the smoke come out of the chimney here. And then you got this whole open area here. So which is which? I mean, are you forging, you're using this or are you using this? Um, if it's a coal forge, it would have been uh, or back in a time frame, something like that, they would have definitely had a an open area so they can and put the uh, steel and stuff in different angles and places. Um, but that would have been obviously by the opening here, um, and it would be closer to the opening. It wouldn't be this far out. Also, I don't know if you notice, there's a sword in the fire here with the hilt and everything like that. That's, that's not how they made swords. They never put the hilt on and then stuck it in the fire. You know, that just would defeat the purpose. It would ruin the handle. You know what you're doing, I'll give you that. Excellent form. But how's your footwork? Now there's sand here. I don't think they did that, 
No, I'm not gonna say. But now it is sand. If I step here, very good. And I watch, I watch. But see here, you can clearly see that looks like hay and stuff here. Yeah. Okay, real quick, first off, I don't know how well you can see here, that is really rough design, or not design, but not very clean. Now the blade doesn't have to be, um, depending on who was going to have the blade and stuff like that, they didn't have a refined finish or anything like that, um, so, but still, that's very rough, and you can clearly tell there's no edge on there, like, at all, so it's fine, it's a movie prop, nobody's really looking at that, but um, you can't just throw a sword and it stick into a wall like that. The, when you throw something like that, there's a tumble effect. And if you were to throw a sword, and these style swords here, the weight's towards the back at the handle because you want it to be fast because it's a type of rapier. Um, so you want it to be fast so the tip moves nice and easily. I, I can tell you right now this would never happen, but I think we all know that. And this part here. There's no way that sword penetrated through the lock on that door, you know, the, the piece of plank that goes to it, into the door, preventing it from opening. No way. And then on top of that, they talk about leverage earlier. Push up and down, wiggle it, and it pop right out. But... That is a wonderful trick. Except once again, you are between me and my way out. Now, you have no weapon. Okay, so the hot spot is way up here. And it's cold down here, but look where he's hitting it. You can see the spark ends right here. <laughs> it, it's nowhere near the hot spot. Um, and plus, on top of that, if he was sword fighting with a red hot blade, um, it would bend and bow and deform so easily. It just it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense. Also, that blade should have cooled down really fast with them swinging around like that. It's they're thin. There's not not much to them. It's interesting. Let me go back a, a second here. All right. So if you look here, right here is that big wheel thing, and it looks like it turns this here, which goes to the bellow. So. I'll give them the fact that they have a bellow there. Um, and it's not to say they didn't have machines, but the reason I disagree with this thing here is because it's powered by an animal and all that stuff. So that means you have to feed, take care of, and you're going to have all the stuff with the animal. And that just wouldn't happen. Um, they definitely did have, like, power tools uh, back in the day. You'll find that they had, like, water-powered hammers and stuff like that. So it's not to say they didn't have something like this that would work. Um, but the problem, though, is, is that if the animal's constantly running or walking and it's billowing air into the forge, it's going to burn that fuel so much faster. So that generally the billow is something that they themselves would be operating, um, you know, so that way they are able to control the fire more readily or, or, or appropriately, I should say, because then if they need to stop it, you know, you figure you can burn your steel and all that stuff. No, you got to stop the animal. The animal's not going to stop like if you had an apprentice, which you like, stop, you can just stop. Yeah, it's just a bellow. I have no idea what that is. Um, I don't know if that attaches to the billow and I'm supposed to be pumping the air into it. And that's supposed to be some weird ash or something that goes to... I have, I have no idea. It looks like it goes to the bellow. 
But I've never seen Red Ash. You cheated. Pirate. Move away. No. Please move. No! I noticed something here. I kind of want to go back a second here. His tongs. They do look okay. Um, but I noticed a thing right here. You can see. And I just because it's not a good angler view of it but it almost looks like that may have been welded on like the parts of the tongue were welded together and that wouldn't be the case heck tongs today aren't like that unless it's a very specific type of tongue they need something but like most time uh, tongue uh the reins and the 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 jaws of the tongue are all one piece you know forged out from one single piece the design and everything so that's what they would have done back then as well all right, well, that is it. That is uh, us reacting to the scene where Jack and Will meet each other. Um, so what is my take on that? So I give it a 5 out of 10. And here's why. Um, a lot of the stuff that's in there looked pretty his historically accurate for the most part. You know, nothing uh, that, you know, like, I get it. They're not going to sit there and try to make, cater to making a hammer that looks like it should be in that time frame you know especially for a quick scene like that um you know but i think they took a little bit too much liberty and oh look guys it'll be cool if we have a donkey walking in a circle that pumps a bellow and all this other stuff because will's supposed to be this really great genius blacksmith thing and you know there are aspects of it that just were not historically accurate you know so i give it a five because you know anvil was mainly was correct they did have a dirt floor when they were doing a close uh, shots of their feet when they were fighting. Um, other times, eh, you know, and, uh, you know, some of the tools and stuff there look pretty good. Everything else, though, was off. They wouldn't have had a big old thing that pumps a bellow like that. Uh, they wouldn't have had an animal in the forge necessarily. And I'm not saying it wouldn't happen, but I highly doubt that. Um, you know, other things, it looks like there's definitely straw on the ground too big of a of a forge and the fire is constantly going they wouldn't have done that leaving completed weapons inside the forge and inside but inside the smithy the shop and inside the actual coal forge it, that just wouldn't happen so a five out of ten i don't think is unreasonable i think part of it's just biased because i enjoy the movie so that guys hopefully you found this kind of fun and entertaining kind of learned a little bit um you know about what a, sm a smith might uh smithy might look like back then guys if you like this video go ahead and hit that like button also got any comments or suggestions leave down below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh hit uh, click that bell for more notifications with that guys thanks for watching and i'll see you later